Hi, I'm Dr. Kathleen Coates. I'm the owner of Coates Hearing Clinic in Smithfield. I'm going to present today on some frequently asked questions and hot topics regarding hearing health care today, and especially during these times. Hearing is essential. It connects us with others. May is Better Hearing Month, so we're going to be sharing some resources and educating the community on hearing health and we're just raising awareness of hearing loss and how it can impact individuals' lives. Our goal is by the end of this presentation um, that you have a better understanding of good hearing health and what that means. The outline will start with hearing now during COVID-19, hearing healthcare in the news, and then some frequently asked questions at the end. Hearing is essential. So it's highly valuable in connecting us with others, especially during this time, it can be challenging. Our current services at our practice, we are doing urgent diagnostic testing. If someone's very struggling a great deal in just communicating with others and hearing what's going on around them, hearing the TV. So we want to make sure that they're able to perform their daily activities and especially for safety reasons as well. We're doing hearing aid fittings and remote programming with the technology today. We're also doing a curbside clinic as well as telehealth video tutorials. And we're also doing free shipping on supplies if anybody needs anything at home. Our curbside clinic, basically the patient calls and schedules a visit and we will go out while they stay in their car and bring it in and sanitize the devices in the lab to be able to fix and repair any hearing aids or implants during this time. We also offer the telehealth with remote programming. So here's an example of a patient who has a device that we were able to call through a free app on his cell phone and actually connect his hearing aids remotely to be able to make adjustments for him. So this is one of our veterans. Other ways that we're staying in touch with our patients is through social media updates, just with any other kind of business or clinic right now, Facebook, Instagram, different social media accounts is a great way to stay in touch with your community and your patients to let them know that you're here um, or what your you know, limited hours might be. So that's an important part I have found. And something I do personally is look up, you know, different restaurants, what are their hours? Uh, how are they staying safe to know what I'm comfortable with? Email correspondence is a big one. We're e constantly emailing our patients with updates and just keeping them informed of what we're doing and how we can help. We also are recording a lot of video tutorials. So if somebody calls in and says, I forget how to clean my hearing aid or I just need some extra support for this. We've started a YouTube channel to be able to provide that service for them remotely so they don't even need to come in. I would say the most important part is just get to, to get creative about it, to really read the environment, use technology, and we'll go over some of that today. Communication strategies for mask hearing is what I call it. There is a student at University of Kentucky who has started making some of these masks to be able to see your face, which is so important for anybody, but also especially for patients who experience hearing loss, they really struggle without having any kind of visual cues or lip reading that fills in the blanks for maybe what they don't quite understand. So we're gonna talk through some of the communication strategies that you can use through this time. Of course, be patient because when you're communicating with a mask on, it can be challenging. Ask for re repetition if you don't understand. So don't just, you know, nod or, or answer. You want to make sure you really understood what somebody's saying, especially for safety reasons. And especially if you're talking to your doctor about, you know, some kind of uh, health recommendation, you want to make sure that you're able to understand. Even though you can't see the person's lips through the mask, it's important to face each other. That way their voice is going directly towards your ears. And there's other visual cues like eyes and body language that can help read the communication in other ways. If there's background noise, TV, 
radio, something in the background, make sure that you turn that down while you're having a conversation so it's not competing noise. Keep a pen and paper with you wherever you go. So if you feel like you're missing something and it's an important, have the communication partner write down um, and give to you, or um, you can write out your question to make sure you know they understand you as well. Um, and you don't have to actually exchange the pen and paper if you're worried about that for safety reasons. They can just write it down and keep that paper or that pen, um, you know, just once you're finished having the conversation. The other important part is technology. So with this, you can use lip reading and visual cues because you're, you're able to see your communication partner. For example, FaceTime, Google Duo, Google Hangouts, Facebook Messenger, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and even I just learned Instagram. I didn't even know you could call people through that. So there's a lot that's out there and it all just depends on what you have, what kind of technology, what kind of phone, what kind of computer. There's a lot of great resources that you can learn more about this online. Um, we're happy to help too of what you think if you need advice on what you need to use for a meeting or for just talking with your family members, we can help set that up for you. It's a great time for technology for everything going on. There's a great way to stay connected um, that is that works for a lot of people. You do, however, need a pretty strong connection, I've found, for a lot of these technology. You might get a little bit of delay or some freezing of the screen, so you just wanna make sure you have a pretty good internet connection. The other important part for hearing loss especially is captioning. So captioning is not just for your TV. Um, I recently found a new app called, it's called Live Transcribe. There's a lot of transcription apps out there that are free, but basically it's a real time transcription that types out on your phone. So I put a little screenshot here of my phone. Um, it says, you know, it looks like your lab work came back negative, but make sure you're taking your medications on time. This is something that you can use while you're on FaceTime or while you're out and you uh, want to make sure you understand what people are saying. It's a great way to transcribe the conversation and you it actually saves it automatically for you as well if you need to go back and review what they said later. There's other apps too that you can get for free for that. If you're using Zoom meetings for work, there is a closed captioning option on this, but you do have to ask your employer ahead of time before the meeting to gain access to that. So they do actually have to set that up for you um, and have it available. But through the ADA, typically employers are open and to provide that accessibility for you. Caption call and cap tell. Um, these are great um, caption telephones as well that we would qualify certain patients for. So if they're struggling to hear on a landline or cell phone, this is a great service. We're also monitoring certain medications that have been used to treat COVID-19 um, that were FDA approved. These medications do have ototoxic effects, but thankfully uh, most of them are temporary. So once the treatment um, once the treatment is over, typically the function of the inner ear goes back to the normal range. But after a patient has COVID-19, once they're fully recovered and healed, if they feel like they have had a change in their hearing, of course, we'll always recommend a baseline just to make sure that there isn't any permanent damage from that. So they're constantly monitoring and researching the different uh, medication effects after this outbreak. Also something that's important are hospital kits. We're offering free hospital kits. If you know anybody that's in the hospital and they're hard of hearing and you feel like they're just not, they just don't have the resources that they need, feel free to call us, that's what we're here for. Or if you're a provider, if you're a nurse or a doctor that works in the hospital or just works in a clinic and you feel like you need some support for that, we're here for you. And it's great because you can let the nurses know that you're hard of hearing, you can give them some good communication strategies. Um, we also give labeled um, cases and batteries and that sort of thing, just to make sure that everything's taken care of. Now going into some hearing health care in the news. So we're gonna talk about some hot topics today. 
One big change in the world of hearing aids is there are now um, custom rechargeable hearing aids. So the style you see here has actually been out for a long time. The, the style that sits behind your ear where if somebody has dexterity issues or just the convenience of not having to change a hearing aid battery, most of our patients are getting the rechargeability now. The new style that is rechargeable are the customs. So these are custom built to the patient's ear canal using ear mold impressions. And now we are able to offer that as a rechargeable option as well. I wanted to review this briefly too, because it seems like there's a lot in the news and a lot online regarding these topics. So if you ever hear the um, acronyms OTC or P PSAPs, we call them, um, OTC stands for over the counter. Um, the, President Trump signed the over the counter hearing aid act in 2017, just because, you know, hearing aid costs has been an ongoing concern. So this would give the consumer access to lower hearing aids in clinics and stores. So the FDA approval, we're still waiting on some guidelines of regarding that and what, what it's actually going to involve. So we're, we'll keep you posted on that once we learn more. And the reason I say consumer in quotes here is, you know, it's marketing directly to um, the individual who's experiencing some hearing loss. Um, and the personal sound amplification products, or the PSAPs, they already exist. So you probably see them in um, CVS, Walmart, that sort of thing that are just amplifiers. They turn up all sound. They're not hearing aids. Um, if they turn up all sound and you have a certain hearing loss, it may cause distortion or over amplification for certain frequencies. So we always recommend to get a medical evaluation first or a baseline test with the doctor of audiology um, before you try certain devices like this. And you also have to be careful with a lot of these because there's a lot of companies out there that will um, compete to sell this product, but you just want to make sure that the treatment is research based. I like to show patients this uh, slide as well, because if you're looking online and you're searching around, this is some of the things you'll see online. And I want to just point out some of the things here that, that we have seen um, or caught online. The first one over here is a company that has, um, it's called the Hearing Hero. It's one of the, just one of the many companies online. But in their marketing, the hearing aid picture, the hearing aid is upside down. So I just worry about what that, if they really know what they're doing and how it's actually going to work the best for the patient. So it's one of those red flags I always tell patients just to be careful of. Um, we're always happy to help, you know, walk you through that to see if it is something that might benefit you or not. The other one is the nano hearing aid. It says, you know, $250 for the pair, I think. Um, yeah, buy one, get one free, sale ends tonight. There was some testing that was done on these devices and it's the same exact product as a $20 amplifier and they're selling it for $250. So I always just say be wary and uh, let us know if you need some advice. The other one too, you'll see a lot. I mean, they're selling the product and you can tell that and they keep saying marking down, you know, 2,578 to 288. Sounds great, right? Um, usually if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, you know, you're welcome to tr try something like that. I've had patients that said that called in as a second opinion because they tried it and it just didn't work and they, you know, returned it within that, uh, return period. The other part is too, this device, I guarantee you was never worth $2,578, um, it, to go down to 288. So especially knowing what the actual product is. The difference. Um, yes, I'm going to do a plug for our clinic, but it's also so important because we're providing the best hearing health care in the community. And I wanted to just highlight the reasons behind that. Um, my husband Jordan and I did our research and wanted to make sure that we were able to provide the best level of care that we know is best for the patient. And that's always our number one priority. The first part over here is hearing aids are not just the only part of the process. It takes a fitting, it takes a lot of measurements, fine tuning, anatomy differences. There's a lot that's involved with that. 
Personalized care, patient-centered care, you may hear about that in healthcare in general. That's so important because you wanna make sure we're tailoring the treatment route to the patient specifically. The other part is we have a full lab here that's able, we're able to um, troubleshoot and clean all different hearing aids. So for some of those online hearing aids, you may not get that kind of support. So if something's broken, you know, you call customer service and they're not able to help you for a while or, you know, parts aren't covered under warranty. So we wanted to make sure we had local care, call us, we'll fix it in the lab for you. The other part is the testing involved with the hearing aids. The ones that you see online don't require a hearing test. They don't require a fitting. Um, they just basically mail it to you. With this, we want to make sure that we measure that the hearing aid is giving the patient most, the most benefit. Um, so there's a lot of test, a lot of testing involved to make sure the patient is getting the, the most benefit from the devices that they're wearing. Health insurance coverage too. This is an important topic where as of January 1st, a lot of other plans now are adding a hearing aid benefit, which is great. Um, before that, there was, it was very rare. So now we verify with every insurance company as soon as a patient calls in to see if they do have any benefits for that. There are some plans, United Healthcare, secondary plans, Aetna, Blue Cross, Humana, lots of different plans that we have found benefits. Um, if, they, if they don't, sometimes there's another third party group too that we're in network with that we can test as well. We always verify this again. So if you just have questions, we can always run that verification for you even before you come in. So if you just give us a call, we'll check on that for you. Some frequently asked questions. So we'll go over that next. I get this a lot, so we kind of touched on it a little bit, but what's the difference between a $300 hearing aid and a $3,000 hearing aid? Why is there such a wide range of hearing prices, hearing aid prices? The two biggest differences are frequency bands and noise reduction. So I'm gonna go through that just a little bit. Frequency bands, the more frequency bands or channels that you have built into a hearing aid, the better the clarity, the more options for fine tuning, better treatment of tinnitus or ringing in the ears. And then noise reduction is also important because that's one of the most challenging environments for patients to hear. If they have hearing loss is hearing in group settings or restaurants, anytime there's competing noise. So the higher levels of you go in the hearing aids, the more noise reduction capabilities there are. So if you're somebody who's active in and out of lots of different settings through the day, you're gonna need a little bit better technology to be able to account for that. I like this graphic as well as, you know, kind of a piano keyboard to talk about the frequency bands or channels because I get a, a lot of questions on what those actually are. So if you think about frequency bands or channels as this piano keyboard here, for example, the Walmart hearing aids, I get that question of, um, a lot about what those are. Those have two bands, two frequency bands or two channels built in. So basically you're getting either low frequency or high frequency. With the hearing aids, um, our hearing aids start at about six or eight channels. So there's lots of different points when the sound goes into the hearing aid that it's gonna be fine tuned and matched closer to that pitch. It's also gonna be programmed to your hearing loss. The two channel devices like at Walmart and CVS, the amplifiers are over the counter. Those are typically not programmed to you specifically. And then the hearing aids that um, even higher levels of hearing aids go all the way up to 48, 64 channels. So the more points that you have, the better the clarity, the better the fine tuning for that reason. Especially for musicians, if they need to be able to tune to a specific frequency, they're gonna need more of those frequency bands. Same with somebody who has difficulty understanding or processing sound they're gonna need all the help that they can get. Um, so if we determine on the testing, they struggle with that, we will recommend a higher level than one of the low end. Will my insurance cover my visit? So we get that question a lot. Patients just calling in curious uh, what that initial visit would cover. Most insurances do cover baseline hearing tests. So that's typically written into your plan. Now there are some plans that require a copay or deductible if you haven't met it yet for certain codes. So we always run that through your insurance and, and let you know if there is a copay. 
So baseline testing is recommended for anybody that has these certain underlying health conditions or certain symptoms. For example, of course, if you notice a change in your hearing, but if you notice any ringing or buzzing or any other sounds in your ears, any kind of balance issues, other health conditions linked here, diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, thyroid disorder, hypertension. So all of these, we recommend a baseline hearing test just because research has shown a link of hearing loss with these conditions. So we always wanna make sure we get a baseline test. That way we can compare over the years if your hearing changes. The other important part is if you have family history of hearing loss, um, we'll wanna make sure we get a baseline for you as well. And of course, loud noise exposure. We wanna make sure that the history that you have of that, or if you're in it, around it currently, we'll wanna make sure it's not impacting your hearing. Um, I also wanted to talk about um, the recommended treatment and if patients find they're not able to afford it at the time, there are lots of options. So we like to think that we have options for every patient and we'll just walk them through that and, and get them the help they need. That's what we're here for. So we have different payment plans like care credit, healthy plan that allow the patients to split up the payments 12 to 18 months with um, no interest or deferred interest plans. We also work with a state program through the NCDHHS that provides one hearing aid if the patient qualifies financially, they fill out an application for that. Uh, we also have our own nonprofit called Matthew 1115. So we do accept donated hearing aids and we, depending on what we have at the time, if we're able to provide that for the patient and they don't qualify for another plan, we may have the funding or the resources for that. There's also a Starkey Hear Now Foundation, which is a national nonprofit that does provide hearing aids for a patient who qualifies as well. We also do some in-house financing um, as well. It's usually only about two or three months worth of um, financing or payments. And then of course, I tell patients too, if my recommendation is a $3,000 hearing aid for based on the results of the hearing test, and they say, well, that's definitely out of the question and they don't qualify for any of these other plans or um, nonprofits, there are low, lower levels, like I mentioned before, of hearing aids too, that something is gonna be better than nothing. So we wanna make sure that we get them in at least something what they need, but not compromising the benefit, but at least getting them some help. Sooner the better. Okay. Um, then the next part here is, if you think about the breakdown too for hearing aids, sometimes I go over this with patients is, of course it's an investment, but um, the value is what we're looking at. For an example here, a $3,000 set of hearing aid, we're gonna try to make them last as long as possible, but say there's last five years, it's spending about $50 a month and about $1.60 a day for their hearing. So it's definitely a good investment over the years. Um, you know, it's hearing is priceless, so we wanna make sure that we're able to help as much as we can. <clears throat> All right, I get this a lot too, is um, what is an audiologist? What do I actually do? Uh, what kind of services can I provide? Um, and kind of what's the difference between an audiologist and an ENT? So an audiologist, we diagnose and treat hearing, tinnitus and balance disorders. So um, it involves a four-year undergraduate and a four-year graduate degree. It's a doctor of audiology degree. And it also includes a one-year residency or externship program. Warning signs of hearing loss. This is something that you can be watching out for when um, during this time. So if you notice anybody that's having, you're having to repeat often, um, they're noticing some frustration just with daily communication, difficulty in background noise. It, a lot of patients will say, well, everyone mumbles. Difficulty hearing women or children's voices. Um, family members or friends are noticing a change. If there's any memory issues or cognitive decline, we definitely wanna make sure we get the hearing tested since there's a link with that as well. Depression, social isolation, and anxiety, that can be caused from the hearing loss as well. So we just wanna get a baseline for that. Why does hearing change with age? So age-related hearing loss is called presbycusis. Uh, there was a research study that came out for 33% of Americans between 65 and 74 experience hearing loss, nearly 50% um, ages 75 and older. Um, so quite a, a big statistic there on um, 
the amount of people who have hearing loss. The reason that your hearing changes with age is the way that your inner ear is set up. So it's kind of the wear and tear theory where when sounds go into the ear just over the years, it can um, cause some damage. So usually it affects some of the higher frequencies or the clarity first. So we just recommend a baseline hearing test for anyone over the age 50. That way we can monitor it over the years. What causes the ringing in the ears or what we call tinnitus? You may also hear it called tinnitus. It's fine either way. Most audiologists say tinnitus. The main cause of tinnitus is hearing loss. So we always want to get a hearing test first as part of that tinnitus evaluation. There are some underlying health conditions, the same underlying health conditions as hearing loss that can cause the ringing. Loud noise exposure, TMJ disorder or grinding, popping, clenching of your jaw. And that's something that the, the, the dentist can diagnose. CATS, um, C-A-T-S-S-S -S -S is a good acronym to remember this. Caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, lack of sleep, sodium, stress. Those are some things that can cause a tinnitus just temporarily. And then also certain medications have a side effect of bringing in the ears. And that's something you can talk with your primary care physician about. So the underlying cause needs to be determined first based on our tinnitus evaluation. And then hearing aids sometimes are the recommended treatment if there is underlying hearing loss but there's lots of other different treatment options as well based on that result. What if I have severe hearing loss and hearing aids do not help? We would do a cochlear implant evaluation if they qualify, they meet that criteria for that. Um, cochlear implants do require a surgery and it takes a long time to relearn how to hear using electrical stimulation, which is what the cochlear implants would do. So. We spend a great deal of time with the patient and lots of testing to go through that to see if they qualify, but it's an amazing technology uh, that's out there today. My father had hearing aids. Why did he never wear them? We get that often when I ask patients that come in, do you know anybody that wears hearing aids is one of my questions. And they'll say, well, yeah, my father wore them and he just never wore them. He was never happy with them. So usually I follow up with that to say, well, how long ago was he fit? Because, you know, technology improvements have come a long way and who fit him? The doctor of audiology degree came about in 2007. So there's a lot of research, um, a lot of time spent with each patient to make sure that they are satisfied and that it's a good fit for them long term. There was also a study that came out in 2019 that actually revealed 92% of patients now who wear hearing aids are satisfied with the sound quality. So that's a great study to show the benefits. Um, and then also for listening and background noise for um, individuals who didn't have hearing aids, they um, the satisfaction was only about 27%, but while they were wearing the hearing aids, it was 76%. So definitely showed an improvement there in 2019. How do I convince my husband to seek treatment? This is a big one too. Um, we've had a lot of people who it just takes a long time to come in and to kind of admit and take that next step. Most patients wait on average four to seven years before seeking help. So it, they just learn to comp compensate or ignore it until it gradually gets worse. Most patients, it is a specific event that happens that finally gets them to make that next step. So, it could be, you know, they heard the time of a meeting wrong and they didn't show up or their grandchild was calling their name and they didn't hear them. Um, the wife during a conversation had to repeat things over and over again. Uh, couldn't hear anything at, you know, their birthday celebration at Cracker Barrel. I mean, there's many different events that gets people finally in the door, but it just, it takes time for them to realize that on their own. I just say, be patient, make sure that they're aware of your concern and your frustrations. So it just doesn't build up and use resources like this to share with them so they can make that decision on their own. The other part too is um, a lot of times we'll do events like free hearing screening events. We found that some, some people that are just kind of hesitant or just want to learn more, get some information without making a full appointment. We'll do different events that include free hearing screenings just to get them in the door. So uh, there's no obligation. You just come in, meet, meet me, pick up some resources. We're going to have one coming up July 21st, hopefully. And we'll be offering refreshments, information, tour the clinic, and just talk to the community from there. So sometimes that's a way to get people in the door. 
Thank you. Um, I know we went through a lot in a short amount of time here, but here is our contact information. Please feel free to reach out if you have questions or um, just need some advice on somebody you know. Um, we're here to help. So just, you know, feel free to give us a call. We also have a Facebook page to follow. We have a YouTube channel. Instagram is our, we have a new Instagram now. So anything you need, just let us know. That's what we're here for. I uh, hope you got a lot from this presentation and I hope you have a great May and stay healthy. Take care.